Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave and welcome to this next entry within this options tutorial series. Today we will be focusing on premiums, how to calculate them, how it interacts with our profit and loss calculators, how it interacts with just actual practical use of options. And of course, it is one of the most important things to understand when it comes to actually using these things. So without further ado, let's get into the live scene right here. And this is our smorgasbord of options in all of its glory, the bingo board as some people call it. And overall, you can see that the uh, nothing's changed here. The strikes are in the middle, calls on the left-hand side, puts on the right-hand side. We're gonna be focusing on calls to begin with. Remember, calls the more bullish of the two different option choices, that being calls and puts. And let's actually check in on the current price of the underline, which is 38, 18 and a half. So let's just jump in with an example. What is it gonna look like if I'm bullish on the underline and I wanna buy some calls to represent that? Well, we can look at this over here. We can say, what's our closest at the money strike? I'd say 38.75. These are not in the money, by the way, which you'll remember from the last video. And the best offer that we can buy them for at the current moment in time, although you can probably get a different price, is $84. One offer is right there as opposed to the 10 um, bid at uh, bid 472. Anyways, uh, we can buy one for $84 on the 38.75 strike expiring the 8th of March, 2019. So what does that actually mean? Well, remember the, the moving parts of this equation. If we buy this call option, we want the price of the underline. We're essentially saying that the price of the underline is likely to be higher than the premium we paid for the option plus the strike price at the expiration date that would be the goal because remember whenever we're buying an option our maximum loss is only what we bought the option for in this case it would be 84 dollars however in order for it to be in the money for it for it to be exercised in our favor it needs to go above 38.75 on by the expiration date but even if it ended right at 38.75 we would actually still lose all of the money that we paid for this option as yes it would be in the money but if we paid 84 dollars and this thing's only going to be worth parity at expiration then naturally speaking the options can be worth worth zero dollars anyways I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself right now. What we really want to do is take this example and put it into an options calculator graph so we can actually get an idea of what this is going to look like. And let's go over here to my beautiful options calculator. I've actually already went ahead and done it. Um, you can get one of these online. I'm sure that if you have any sort of worthwhile uh, options quoting software, well, not options quoting software, but options trading software, it should be able to do something like this for you. I don't have any experience with retailing, uh, with retailer software. I've worked with uh, DrivX, I've worked with LiveVault, I've worked with MJT, but I can't speak to actual retail services, but I'm sure that they have something like this um, if they're worth their salt. And let's just do this example. We are working off the strike of 38.75. We bought one for $84. Current price of the underlined is 38.18. So what's our position graph gonna look like? Well, very simple, right? Very simple. We're going to break even at the strike plus the premium, which is going to be 38, or sorry, 39, um, what is it going to be? 39.59. That's right. It's right there, right in front of me. And as soon as we go below the strike price, we're going to lose $84 for every contract owned, as you can see down here. But also realize that for every single dollar tick above that break even of 39.59 we're going to make one dollar as you can see for each and every tick per contract so you know if you're doing 10 10 contracts going to be ten dollars per every tick if you're doing 100 contracts being a hundred dollars per every tick um basically tell it to infinity so your so your risk your your potential profit is unlimited your potential risk is limited actually quite a good way of doing it. In fact, I would argue that this is in some ways, it's like built-in risk management for a lot of people. Although there's a lot of contingencies to that statement, of course, going to that in great detail, great, de great detail in the options, uh, in the options mastery program. But for this video series, we're going to have to really take one thing at a time. So again, this is what it's going to look like. Very simple, right? Very, very simple. So you can imagine, going back on over here to our smorgasbord, that we could do this for anything, right? Let's say we were, let's say we were really bullish, right? We were really bullish, and we think that Bitcoin's going to get above four thousand 
uh, by by the end of uh, essentially next week. This is a weekly expiring uh, option. Again, the uh, the eighth of March. Currently, it's March first, actually. So happy March, by the way. If you're if you're viewing this at a later date, welcome from the past. And uh, let's say we're really bullish uh, by end of week. We want to we're, we think that it's going to go above four thousand. So let's do the same sort of thing, right? Remember, four thousand. We can buy one option, or we can't even buy one option. It's not even offered there, but. Let's just imagine that we could buy one for uh, for forty two dollars, four thousand strike expiring at end of week. Well, let's go into it over here and input this again, four thousand, and we're buying it for what was it, forty bucks, something like that. Let's just make sure. Yeah, it's about forty two bucks, close enough. And same sort of thing right here. You see a very a very obvious break even. What's going to be your break even? Well, it's the strike price plus your premium price, the price that you paid for the option. So that means that Bitcoin has to get above your break-even price of 4040 in order for you to actually start generating a profit. And you see that the second that it goes below 4000 you're actually at your maximum loss capacity of $40 per contract. So of course, I'm using very rudimentary examples with this. This is just with one contract. Obviously, you're unlikely to be doing one contract. It's You're probably going to, you know, probably have some people out there doing a thousand contracts, but let's just do a hundred and see what the profit's going to be on something like that. Now your maximum loss is times 100, 4,000, but your maximum profit is technically unlimited. And for each and every tick, and for each and every $1 tick up, you're actually making $100 per that tick above 40, 40. Now, here's the thing. And this is something that I'll probably get into later when we talk about expirations, but when we're talking about how this reacts at expiration date on expiration the second of the second before expiration yes this is accurate but the time before the expiration date the value of these options each and every one of these options is going to change around depending upon what the overall outlook is on bitcoin or the underlying asset again here we're using bitcoin but uh but let's just say you know it, it, you could use any example it doesn't matter it's, it's irrelevant my point is, is that more bullish things, those out of the money calls that you bought for maybe $40 right now, if Bitcoin were to rally in the next few days, even though it's not expiration yet, but if it rallied up to maybe, you know, 3,900, 3,950, those calls are going to naturally gain more value to represent that. But there's an ever adjusting equation that as it approaches expiration, those options values will go towards zero if they are out of the money. And the ones that are in the money will be more representative of their value with regards to, to the parity price of the underlying. Parity price meaning just the price of the underlying. So it'd be the strike price plus the premium price equals price of the underlying, essentially. Remember that because that is a very, very important thing. Perhaps I need to even give that give that its own video, but but to put it very bluntly, that's exactly what <laughs> exactly what I'd say. So again, let's go back into our smorgasbord over here, and um, let's do let's do the opposite uh, the opposite example. Let's sell a call. What's that going to look like? Because it's going to look incredibly different, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly different. And this is going to show the drastic change that you will notice when switching up the buy or sell side. So let's do the same example. Uh, we're going to sell a thirty-eight seventy-five call for seventy-two dollars and fifty-nine cents. So what are we essentially saying here? We're essentially saying that as long as Bitcoin does not close above 38.75 by by expiration date, which is about one week from today, then I will actually be able to collect the premium that I sold it for, that being $72.50. So let's go over here to our options calculator. We're going to be a seller now. And let's do, we said 38.75. And we're selling these for, what was it, 72 bucks? Okay, cool. So now you can see, again, it doesn't look too impressive when you look at it like this because this is literally going on to infinity, but your maximum profit is gonna be $72 for every contract sold if it closes out of the money. We want these to close out worthless if that's gonna be the case. But also notice, you have unlimited risk with limited profit potential this sounds really bad at first but i would actually argue the crux of all of, or sorry the basis of all of my successful option strategies involve selling options 
because we can re we can trade other options against it. So we can hedge with other options. We can hedge with the underline. We can do lots of different things. We'll get into uh, very rudimentary examples of that at the end of this series. But for now, I just want to bring this up and show what this will look like. Obviously, your break even point is going to be thirty nine um, forty seven. Just basically the uh, the because because we sold the option for seventy two dollars all the way up from the strike price plus $72, we're actually still making money because we sold it for $72. But at the point of the strike price plus the premium, we actually start breaking even. And then we start losing for every dollar after that. So essentially, you could even think of this in a way as saying, you don't believe that the price is going to go above 39.47, I believe it is, yeah, 39.47 before that expiration date. But for each and every take that you go above the strike price, you're gonna be losing if you hold that to expiration. Now, of course, just like we spoke about with calls, if the price, if the underlying price of, of Bitcoin moves uh, you know, around intra-week, it's gonna reflect in the price of this guy. But as time expires, as time decays towards expiration, the option is gonna naturally have less value to, re to be representative of the parity value of the underlying. So if we're out of the money, it's gonna rapidly decline. So if the price of Bitcoin were to go down right now, these options will actually go down in value as well. If Bitcoin were to rally from here, they're going to go up as well. But they're also fighting time decay over time because, again, they are out of the money, technically speaking. Okay. All right. We spoke about that. Okay. So, again, th these videos are meant to be, you know, come back towards um, multiple times. Please understand that... This whole series, options, is a very complicated topic, so don't rush through it. If you really do want to learn this, spend your time. We're going to now get into the puts, the put side of the equation, or the put man, as one of my friends used to say. Um, <laughs> and we'll do the same thing here. We'll use the app, The Money Strike, which is 3875. Or actually, it's um, <laughs> funnily enough, when we began this video, it was uh, it was 3875. If we take down any, any more, it will be 3750. As that is uh, sixty-three dollars away, this is currently about fifty. Um, yeah, almost um, about the same actually. You know, what? let's use the thirty-seven fifty strike for the puts. Okay, so now we have to switch our whole our whole perception around with puts, right? Because remember, if we're buying a put, we want price action to go down. So it's the put premium plus a strike price is going to be equal to our profit point, our break-even point. And then for everything below that, so it's actually, you know, to be actually a little bit more direct, it's thirty. It's it's our strike price minus the premium, which is going to be actually our break-even price. And then for each and every take below that, we start making money. I apologize for that, uh, for that slip of tongue, but let's go look at it in practice. That's going to make a lot more sense. And uh, we're going to use a 3750 strike uh, put. We can buy, there's 16 offered at 84 bucks. Let's go put that into the calculator and see what that spits out. Um, first things first, we need to actually go to the puts. We can't use this with the call. Where's my put number five, it looks like. And there we go. Put them in. <laughs> no pun intended. And there we go. A oh, little, little bit of an insight into what uh, selling a put's going to look like. And let's do 37.50. And we said, what, it was, it was $84? Yeah, let's check this out. Okay. So what's it going to look like? Well, we have unlimited profit to the downside. We have unlimited profit to the downside. Where do we break even? Well, remember, the break-even point is going to be the strike price minus the premium paid. We paid $84. We're using a strike price of $73, or sorry, $37.50. So our break-even is going to be, as calculated right here, at $3,666. So basically, our maximum loss is going to be equal to the premium paid, $84. Our break-even point is $36.66. And then for each and every tick below $36.66, we have technically, well, technically it is kind of limited profit because at zero, you, you can't go below zero. You really can't go lower, bro. There. <laughs> but um, my point is, is for the most part, you know, you, you, have, you have unlimited profit potential to the downside, just like you have unlimited profit potential to the upside if you're a buyer of the options. Now, with that said, again, for, for the beginner, it probably sounds intuitive. Intuitive. So, oh man, these are like lottery tickets. I could just buy them and uh, and there's unlimited profit potential. Yes. But I can tell you this, I almost never buy options. I use them to manage risk sometimes uh, 
be cut because of the time component. But um, but overall, I have no real intent in buying options. Anyways, um, okay, cool. So we get that, we get that. I think it makes a lot more sense with this graph. This one actually looks a little bit more pretty the way that it kind of represents this. And let's now flip it on its face. Let's sell this option. Let's say, no, I'm bullish. I'm bullish and I think that Bitcoin's gonna close above 3750 by end of week. Now, of course, it's when I say I think it's gonna close above this area by end of week, it's this is likely gonna be based off of some sort of analysis, hopefully. It's I'm not just going off feelings, but just for the ease of conversation. Uh, let's just say I'm bullish and I don't believe that Bitcoin's gonna be below 3750 by end of week. In fact, it's definitely gonna be above. So I'm gonna sell these puts because they're worth they're gonna expire worthless. Why not? So if we can sell them for seventy and a half dollars, or let's just say $70 at the 3750 strike. What is that essentially going to be? Let's just think about it first before we get into the, into the calculator. Where's your break even point going to be? Well, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same break even as we saw before. Remember, because if we sell these for $70 at the strike price of 3750, well, actually, it's not It's not going to be the same price, but the same equation. Um, <laughs> kind of throws it off. But basically, if we sell these things for 37, or sorry, if we sell these things for $70 at 3750, then price action can go $70 below the strike price that we sold it for. And we'd actually be at delta neutral. We would, we would quite literally be even at expiration. It would, it would be worthless and we'd have made zero loss, zero. So let's get into the uh, into the calculator here, and let's sell this guy. Okay, and I think we said seventy. Let's just do it out. Your break even is going to be thirty six eighty. Easy math, right? Just seventy minus the strike price, and then for each and every dollar that you tick below that break even price of thirty six eighty, now we start losing money. So before we were just getting closer to break even. Now we're actually losing money. What's our maximum profit? It's limited. It's only equal to the price we sold the option for. In this scenario, seventy dollars uh, for for each and every contract. Again, you know, if we could, you could do this. I don't want to make it sound like you're just going to do this one time. It makes it sound very weak. What if you do it a hundred times? It's going to be seven thousand dollars. So again, understand that this scales quite a bit. Um, so yes. Your maximum profit, you know, just straight, just a straight line, just like your maximum loss would be if you were on the buy side, but of course it's flipped on its face. So let's get back into our option smorgasbord over here and let's start to recap a few things. I've been going over a lot of ideas. This video alone focusing on premiums, but let's actually tie a few things together. So remember, in with regards to calls, our call value is equal to the premium price paid plus the strike price, which expires at some at some you know later date. The price of the option is only ever going to be worth parity if it's in the money. If it's out of the money, it's just going to be worth zero. And of course, on the other side, if we sell the option, the maximum we could ever lose is unlimited. The maximum we could ever gain is limited, as opposed to the opposite for for buying. Those are the big differences right there. For puts, a little bit different. Of course, if we're buying a put, we want price action to go down. The price action is going, or sorry, our premium paid for the put plus the strike price, sorry, the strike price minus the premium paid is gonna be equal to our break even point for each and every tick below there. That's when we start making money if we bought a put. By the same token, if we sell a put, the premium that we sold it for minus the strike price, or you want to switch those around the equation so you don't get a negative number, but the strike price minus the premium sold is going to be equal to our break-even point for every for every price point below there, we lose money. For every price tick above there, we make money uh, as much as the premium sold sold it for. And again, that, that part of the equation is consistent amongst both calls and puts. And essentially, when you're a seller, your maximum profit can only ever be what you sold it for. Okay, so I think that covers up what I wanted to get out on premiums. Just a few other things, just a few other sides while we are on this topic. Um, premiums are going to be reflective of the overall sentiment with regards to that strike price being in the money or out of the money. The more deep in the money strike prices are going to have high, higher premiums, the further out of the money strike prices are going to have 
um, lower premiums. As, as the expiration gets closer and closer, those premiums on the out of the money strikes will come closer and closer to zero. As you can see right now, the the premiums on really anything above the 4,000 strike are you know, basically nothing. I mean, it's <laughs> basically free if you wanna do a little bit of gambling. Of course not, I don't suggest that. It's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. But um, <clears throat> as far as the in the monies, they will only ever be worth parity. Remember, the premium paid you have to have the you have to have the premium paid plus the strike price greater than the price of the underlying at expiration if you want to make money for those for in the in the example of calls for puts it's a strike price minus the premium paid and then for every tick below that that's where you're making money so again understand these things understand how the actual premium operates with relation to the expiration date with relation to the strike price and how these actually look in a graphical representation that's going to do it for this video i'll see you in the next one again if this feels a little bit overwhelming please feel free to come back to these videos they're meant to be rewatched and rewatched again and again and again and that will do it for now i'll see you in the next one take care